and welcome to the Rural Project. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I took my area of land from this to this as I prepare the area to install a slab and eventually put a shed in place. So I already have a suite of videos that have been released which show how the retaining walls have been built and I'll put those in the link above. So what I'm doing here, I've hired in a, an excavator and I'm going to actually do a bit of bulk earth removal. So I've Got the retaining walls in, there's still a lot of excess soil in the area, so the uh, excavator is used to scrape all that out and get it sort of roughly level. Also using the excavator, as you can see here, to uh, to backfill some trenches for drainage that I'd, uh, that I'd installed prior to this works. And again, those are shown in, in different videos. As you can see, what I'm doing here, basically working my way across the area where the slab's going and removing all that excess soil I'm not making it perfectly level, but I'm uh, certainly making it a lot more level than it was previously. Just sort of roughing in the uh, roughing in the area, getting it as level as uh, as I could do with a with an excavator. So the next thing that I did, when it was quite a, a while later, I brought in a brought in a bobcat. I'd also removed a, a whole heap of bricks from this area and there was all sorts of rubbish that had built up over the passage of time since I'd uh, done the previous jobs. Came in with a bobcat, borrowed a, a large trailer and um, set about filling the trailer there with all the rubbish and junk that, that was there and thereabouts on the land so I could take that off to the tip. So what you'll see here unfortunately is a little wriggly, wriggly snake that uh, that's actually hidden underneath one of the one of the roof panels. Now it gets fatally wounded there as I uh, as I sort of drive over it with a bobcat, and uh, unfortunately it does die. So it's a tiger snake. So I'm certainly glad I didn't get bitten by it. It's a very deadly snake. So using the bobcat again just to sort of smooth out all the entrance to where the slab's going to be. Moving dirt around from the from the front, which was a bit a uh, bit higher than it should have been, moving that to, through to the back of where the slab's going, and moving some of the excess dirt again up into the corners of the retaining walls, just to sort of help those areas smooth out a bit, and then finalised by filling up the trailer with just about every bit of junk that I had left on the land. All those pipes and everything was all all waste that had been left over from uh, from previous. And it was a case of trying to get this almighty trailer with all the bricks up the uh, up the hill out of the driveway. range first from a standing start wasn't going to cut it what I needed to do was uh, get myself backed up give myself a little bit of a runner there was a huge amount of weight in this trailer now, luckily I was only going a short distance up the road to the local tip and, uh, yeah, the driveway is a, is a mix of block paving and, and gravel and uh, I needed to get some speed up before I went and hit it Took me about half an hour to load the trailer with the bobcat or putting all the bricks in place because what I didn't think about was once I got to the tip it's a case of unloading the trailer by hand so I was there for about two and a half hours unloading brick after brick and sheet after sheet and trying to help uh, the recycling place there move it all into the different different areas of steel and rubble, timber, plastic 
So once I uh, once I got that completed, we got back and got back into using the Bobcat. So the job at hand with the Bobcat was again to to continue trying to get the grade better than it was. As you can see on some of the pictures, it was still sloping down high on the left and low on the right. And some of that excess dirt needed pushing to the back of where the slab was going to be, to sort of build that area up just slightly. And as you can see in uh, typical Melbourne weather, the, uh, the rain started falling before I got finished, so it did turn it into quite a slippery mess. However, as you can see, we certainly moved the uh, moved the grade, got it a lot more level than it had been previously. So once we'd finished, I was really happy with the results. I was really getting close now to being ready to start to put the slab on. What I needed to do though was still do a, a, a real final cut. There was areas that I needed to drop down and smooth over a lot better in preparation for the, uh, the step heights in some of the concrete. And I also needed to auger a lot of holes in there for the foundations. So what I did late February, I managed to find a, an excavator up for sale. So it was a Cat 304. Now luckily it was, uh, it was coming with a, with a suite of buckets and, um, and a log grab, which was just fantastic for what I'd need it for. And I also managed to very quickly purchase a, a second hand auger and all the, all the auger heads. So a 250, 350, 450 and 600 mil diameter auger heads. So it really put me in a great position to get in there now and then um, yes start working out exactly where the levels needed to be where i needed to go a little bit deeper and then um, yeah set up this this base ready for the slab to go in so what you can see here obviously just working through with the uh, with the mud bucket on the excavator just doing a, a real final surface scrape and uh, getting getting all these areas level within uh, within sort of five ten mil and once that was done, it was time to set out the area for, for the piles, but you'll see that in a future video. Hopefully you enjoyed this, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.